Uh, this is an excerpt from a chapter in my book called Manners and Gratitude. I was persuaded to go on a cruise with one of my college buddies and his family during President's, which was school vacation week in February of 2007. Out of 3,000 passengers, it seemed like 2,500 were spoiled bratty kids. I was one of about six single people on the ship and along with and, and along with a boring figure skating exhibition, Charo, as in Coochie Coochie Charo, was uh, part of the entertainment. Seriously, what the hell was I thinking? It was one of my best college buddies. It's like, we don't get together enough. We need to get together. The, the, the cruise that I went on last year with my family, there were all these beautiful women. And, and so I go on school vacation week in February. It was beautiful. <laughs> there were the, uh, as I call it, the perfect families building uh, taking pictures before dinner in like the exact same color khakis and uh, Izod like uh, orange Izod shirts and the same color khakis building pyramids with the fake uh, cruise ship in the background taking these pictures I called them the, I used to actually go to dinner early to purposely watch the perfect families take pictures for their Christmas cards it was pathetic sorry if anyone's ever done that <laughs> But it was, it, was enter <laughs> it was entertainment for me. So uh, one morning I, I grabbed some breakfast. Uh, I mean, I grabbed something to read and I filled up my tray from the breakfast buffet and I headed to the empty bar for some peace and quiet. There's only so much of that communal table thing you can take. Has anyone here been on a cruise? Anyone here been on a cruise and hated it? Ah, nice. We'll have to talk later. So after introducing myself to the bartender and enjoying a cup of tea in my meal, I watched as one child after another paraded up to the bar and yelled, Coke, to the bartender. Finally, I asked one of the brazen little brats, what's the magic word? After the Coke demand, the bartender smiled an approving grin, winked at me as he poured the drink and the kid looked at me and asked, asked what I meant. I had to explain to him, that it was more polite to ask for a Coke and to say please at the end of his request and that please was the magic word. The little punk looked at me indifferently and said, oh, as if to say whatever, then grabbed his Coke, rolled his eyes and stormed away without saying thank you. Later that same day, I was sitting at the bar by the pool, it was a gorgeous day, enjoying a beer, when a customer approached and snapped, get me a rum and Coke, in response to the bartender's warm greeting, no hello, no please, no nothing. I was very tempted to turn to the customer and say, hey, I met your son at breakfast this morning. <laughs> Apparently, he hadn't learned the magic word from his parents either. That's my quick little story to get things kicked off. And, uh, I'm sorry. So uh, my first job as a waitress was at a place called As You Like It in Harvard Square, which I should have called If We Have It, because very much like Larry's stories, I had to go to customers and they would say, I'd like French fries, mm, not today don't have any. <laughs> Hamburger, mmm, nah, not really. So could I have a fork? Gee, you know, the dishwashers don't really have it happening. So uh, you'll just have to wait a little bit for that. And one of the reasons why the dishwasher and the, uh, the cooks were having a little problem, because I thought that if I went back into the uh, kitchen and spoke in Spanish, it would be a good thing, except I don't speak any Spanish. So um, I would go back into the kitchen, I'd say things like, uh, okay, uh, necesito un madre de huevos. And so the, they would just fall out laughing because I just asked for the mother of testicles and when I was looking I just couldn't think of the word pollo I just didn't know the word for for um chicken yeah I don't even know it in English apparently but anyway so I would go back and ask things for you know I'd say things like um uh, a burger con queso which turned out to be to the Argentinian and the Puerto Rican dishwasher to I just asked for a penis with cheese actually <laughs> So they didn't get a whole lot of work done. But um, the thing, the reason why I got fired, and it's one of the few jobs I ever got fired from, was because apparently they didn't like my attitude. And I guess it was when these um, three Radcliffe girls, so that dates me, there were, there were girls from Radcliffe, were sitting there and eating, and I had to tell them about all the things we didn't have, and et cetera, et cetera. And as is typical, you know, as, as Larry was saying, you know, you always get blamed. And as Patrick was saying, you always get blamed for what's happening in the kitchen or the management. You know, you are the frontline person. So they weren't very happy with me, and they were incredibly, incredibly condescending and mean. But when they left, they managed to leave a, a nickel on the table. And they were going out the door, and their, their, table, their table had been about here, and the door was about there. And I did have a chance to see the nickel, and I went zipping up to them, and I said, excuse me, excuse me, but I believe you forgot something on your table. 
And they looked very surprised and said, what? And I took one of their hands like this and I said, here, smack. That's yours, I believe. And turned on my heel. And I was fired for walking around like I owned the place. That's what I was fired for. <laughs> my first waitress job. Okay, so 8.8. .8. What are some of the worst comments that you've ever heard a customer make to you or a coworker? And here's just a sampling of some of the responses that I received back. Uh, there were always comments that implied that I must not be educated and this is the, the best job that I could find. So we get, so are you in school? Is this your real job? What is your real job? Why don't you get a real job? And as I always like to say, these people need to get a real life. I heard a customer ask, one, cu one uh, person replied to me, they said they, they heard a customer ask our hostess if she was retarded. One passenger who missed a flight became in indignant and sarcastic and told me how proud I must be to wear a uniform and then told me his sunglasses cost more than I make in a week. <laughs> happens all the time. One of my customers, one of my co-workers, Ruben from Guatemala, was helping a couple with their luggage one day at the hotel, and when he introduced himself, the woman said, don't talk to me, I don't understand Spanish people and I don't like them. Ooh. Anyone that's worked in customer service gets this stuff and they know it's real. People email me all the time and they say, these things that you talk about on your blog, are these things real? And I don't make any of this up. I would have no credibility if I did. It's stuff that's real, that comes from real people and everyday experiences, and they happen all the time. So, here's my challenge to the audience. Two of the questions I have on my questionnaire. Number three, please list some of the worst comments you've ever heard a customer make to you or another coworker. And number four, what are some of the worst things you've been called when a customer has tried to get your attention? So we're going to ask in the break if you can think about those two, two items. And then anyone who's, who's willing to come up to the microphone and share two truths and one and lie. Fine, fine. And then we're going we'll, to... We'll guess. We'll guess which, uh, which of yours is real and which of cool. yours is, uh, is fabricated. Cool. And right now what we have... Uh, the emphasis, one of the biggest emphasis is, 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 is that uh, it's, it's not a, it's, my project isn't a personal memoir, it's, it's more about collecting stories and I've gathered over 200 questionnaires back from folks that have worked in customer service jobs and uh, I actually purchased the domain name Customer Hall of Shame and have received contributions from, from folks. And, one of the ones that was that really stuck out, it really hit home for me because as, as someone that's uh, writing a book for the first time, there's a lot of highs and there's a lot of lows because sometimes it's like, am I just a voice in the wilderness? Is anyone listening? Does anyone really care? And then you get a story that just really hits home and this is one of them. This is from someone that uh, has 28 years of experience as a restaurant server. In a Harvard Square restaurant on the night of Harvard's graduation, the kitchen was completely overwhelmed. One irate customer exclaimed loudly, who here thinks the service sucks? Oh, the entire room broke into applause. Even though the kitchen's meltdown was not the fault of the waiters, I and my waiter peers had to continue to work that room in that unruly mob-like atmosphere. And this stuff happens all the time, as you folks know, who have worked in customer service jobs. I have thousands of these stories, and that's why I can't wait to tell them in my book. Okay, we have, uh, I bartended on and off for 10 years. I think that was really the genesis of the project that I'm currently working on, the blog and book project that I have forthcoming. It's called I'm Your Server, Not Your Servant. And the subtitles are the, uh, a case for human-to-human -human service and civility, and a, uh, a voice for service and industry workers everywhere. So it's really taking the, the uh, position of advocating for folks who have or currently do work in a capacity as a customer service worker. And one of the main reasons I came here tonight after the initial conversation I had with Nora was that uh, I believe wholeheartedly in the importance of storytelling and story listening. Uh, we really can all learn so much from each other if we invest the time in each other.